Hi guys, let's take a quick look at the problem we face when estimating future costs. So I'm going to use an example of Pohl's Plastics. Now Pohl manufactures plastic buckets and he's made a list of his costs for the past month um, in which he produced 100 buckets. So in order to produce the 100 buckets, um, his first expense or cost was plastic, so that's a, a raw material or a direct material, and that cost him 1,000. He also used um, a lot of electricity, that's to heat up the molding machine to melt the plastic, and that cost him 300. And then finally, he had to rent the machine, and that for that he pays 2,000 per month. So the total cost to make the 100 buckets amounted to 3,300. Now Paul's expecting a big jump in demand, and he's expecting that his production is probably going to double, so to 200 buckets, and he wants to know how much will that cost him to make. So he needs to plan. So let's look at each of these costs and see how easy it is to estimate. So the first item is plastic or raw materials. Now since the buckets each look the same, so all the buckets look the same, they use the same amount of plastic, it's a variable cost. So remember, variable cost increases in direct proportion to the number of units. So if we know we're going to manufacture 200 buckets, then so that's double um, 100, then we know we'll probably spend double on plastic. So each bucket looks the same, so it's fairly easy to estimate the future cost if we know the amount of units. Now next we'll have a look at rent. That's also an easy one. So he rents a machine and he pays 2000 per month. So that's a fixed cost. Remember, a fixed cost stays the same regardless of the number of units, provided that it has enough capacity. So if this machine can produce a 200 buckets, we don't need to rent an additional machine, so we know the cost will stay 2000 It's a fixed cost. Now the problem with the last cost, electricity, is uh, that Paul knows electricity goes up as he produces more, and it makes sense because the machine uses quite a lot of electricity to heat up. Um, and then in month when he produces less buckets, he sees the amount coming down. But in some of the months, he didn't produce any buckets, but he still paid for electricity. So that's to keep the lights on, uh, to keep the security system, uh, and maybe the machine needs to be um, st stay at a certain temperature so that it's easier to quickly heat it up again. So there's a certain fixed cost involved in the electricity, but there's certainly also a variable component. So it has a fixed and a variable component, and we call that a mixed cost or sometimes a semi-variable cost. But it's the same thing, a mixed cost. Now, how do we estimate a mixed cost? The, the problem is um, it's, it's difficult if we look at the cost in total, the 300. But if there's a way we can split the cost into its fixed component and the variable component, if we can separate the two, then we know the fixed component will stay fixed regardless of the number of units, and the variable component will increase in direct proportion to the number of units. So if we can split the mixed cost into its fixed and variable component, we can estimate the cost. And that's what we'll use the cost estimation techniques for.